Y'all, I just got some mail in from Homestead Aquarius, and I thought I would open that with you uh, right now. Let's see what we got in the box. Here's the box, and it's heavy. We got that open. Looks like this. It's packed really nicely. <laughs> Y'all, I'm set. Uh, I've got toilet paper, free I don't need to probably put that close to my face. He probably infected this with the coronavirus and uh, sent it to me. Nah, I got I got butt wiped. Let's see what's in here. Holy cow, dude! What all did you send me? Rattlesnake beans. You know, sometimes people are just so good to you, you feel a little overwhelmed. And um, uh, tears is what almost comes to mind. I got some okra seed, some rattlesnake beans. I'm excited about those rattlesnake beans. Thank you so much, Homestead Aquarius. Um, not sure what this is. It looks like some strawberry starts. I know you said you were going to send some of those, and that's what that looks like. Let's see, let's see what else is in here. I can saw what cut up. Uh, surprise, surprise. I don't know what's in here. Oh, wait. That's Jerusalem artichokes. That's the sun chokes that you said you were going to send. There's a bunch in there, I can tell. Let's see what's in the last box. Oh, this is the strawberries, y'all. I know strawberries. This is strawberries. Dude, you are the man. If you go to Homestead Aquarius' channel, you can see about these crones, but they are an edible um, mint root that um, really got a lot of health benefits and stuff and not cheap. Just overwhelming mail unboxing, dude. Um, thank you. God bless you, man. Thanks. It's getting ready to storm here, and I'm going to go ahead and get these strawberries in the ground before it rains. Um, put these in my strawberry bed. Man. Now, these are nice crowns. That one's got a strawberry on it. I'm going to go ahead and pick these little strawberries off. They don't need to be worried about producing fruit right now. They need to... Uh, Worry about growing, getting bigger. So there's one. This one looks really nice too. I'm gonna pull this blossom off, and pull this strawberry off. These are very early bearing strawberries, it looks like. And uh, that's super neat. Go ahead and get this little guy. Wow, they're loaded with strawberries. Even these little ones. Get this one in. That one came out of the dirt well. Hey, a little, a little uh, violet there too. A little violet. I think I'm gonna leave this one as a clump. I'm gonna pull these little strawberries off here. So that way we're not worried about making fruit right now. We're just gonna try Y'all, these strawberries are loaded with berries. They're going to, next year, they are going to produce some incredible strawberries. I can just tell. Looks like poison ivy. Here comes the rain. All right. There are strawberries one, two, three. I left that as a clump. Um, and then... The little violet I planted in the back corner of this bed. I mixed it in with my other strawberries for uh, for now, but uh, that's the best we can do. Uh, I think I'm going to put my Jerusalem artichokes in this bed, in these open holes in this bed, and then this will be my Jerusalem artichoke bed in the in the near future. So, in between these plants, I'll put these Jerusalem artichokes so that they can have a place to grow up and begin to do. That. See here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and I could probably divide those up and get more. But I'm just going to plant them as is because of the weather crunch. And I evenly space them in this bed here. Whoo! Jerusalem artichokes are in this bed, and some of those tubers were nearly as big as my fist. Jerusalem artichokes, sun chokes, as you might have heard them called, are a great food for diabetics. Um, it's, it's a starchy like a potato, but they don't spike the blood sugars. The blood, it actually helps with the blood sugar uh, for people with diabetics. I, my next door neighbor is a diabetic. My mother's husband is a diabetic. And so I've already talked to my mom about splitting some with, with her. My neighbor never heard of them before, neither had my mother. So uh, those are gonna be really nice for people I already know to be able to share out as those grow and, and me be able to provide others that I know that uh, can be benefit, a benefit to them um, as I get those up and going and dividable that I'll be sharing. And uh, so you've blessed not only myself and my family, but you've blessed countless others. Uh, you know, uh, I'm like you, I'm a sharer, and I enjoy sharing the good things with uh, those around me because I just believe it's the right thing to do. But uh, my neighbor's gonna benefit for sure, and uh, my mother and her husband will absolutely benefit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say it enough, you know? But uh, let's look at the crones real quick, and then we'll wrap this one up. So what I'm gonna do to pre plant these crones is uh, I've got these pots that I can kind of keep an eye on of what they're doing. I'm just gonna punch some holes in the bottom here so that it, they like well-drained soil, they like to stay moist. Whoops. I didn't want to bust the pot, but trying to beat the rain, so rushing a bit. Maybe I just need to slow down and relax. So we got quite a few holes in there. It's raining! Y'all, I'm gonna break out the good stuff for these. I'm just gonna grow directly in this. Good potting mix that I've got. They like uh, rich organic material. Whoops. The rain, boss, the rain. Get that soil mixed up in there. I can use that over here. So here's our crumbs. Put some of this dirt that they're in with them. Oh, wow. There's one. That one's already got a sprout on it. I'll show you one up close. See it? That's a crone. And it's a little starchy tuber. It's another good diabetic food. I'm just gonna barely let that growing tip peek out. And there's another one that's already sprouting. Whoops. And that's a top. Oh, that one's really nice. Get in there, crone. Oh my, some of these are so little but uh, I'm proud to have them. There's another one. I'm gonna have to be careful because some of these are so tiny I may miss. There's a nice one. Yep. I don't even know how many I planted. I'll have to go back and watch the video. Woo, I'm gonna look like I get ready to eat. Get in my soil. Another little one. And another one. I may not have enough pot. I'm almost certain I don't. But another little one. Another one. Holy cow! It's like 10 or 15 of these things. And they're sprouted. I'm gonna plant those three in another container. Let me go find another container. The other three, I've got an old nursery pot that I saved. 
and uh, I'm not going to skimp on the soil on these things. Oh, they're an extremely valuable crop. Um, cover that one up. You know, look at this one. See that? That's a chrome, and it's you can see it's just starting to peek out and do its thing. Put that in this pot here. Try to be a little delicate with that grow tip. And the last little baby here, this pot will have three in it. I'm gonna put these beside the greenhouse where I can kind of keep an eye on what's going on with them. And I'll mulch them when they get a little bigger. That's Crohn's. So we got that done. We got our uh, strawberries in the strawberry bed. We started the Jerusalem artichoke bed, and I know I had peas and some kale growing in that bed, but I don't mind removing that stuff to make sure those Jerusalem artichokes take priority in that place. And then we got the Crohn's, and we put those in their own pots so I can isolate them kind of to... I've never even heard of them, never looked to grow them. They grow in a, a, a well-drained soil, just slightly acidic, down to about a 6.5 to a 7.7. 7. So they really like a neutral soil, um, but they want a lot of organic material and well-drained, which most plants do. But I, these crones are kind of finicky and special um, to get the root roots to grow, the tubers to grow. You can grow the greens pretty easy, but uh, to get big tubers is sort of an experiment in uh, growing for me, for sure. But <clears throat> y'all, if you are not sharing the bounty that you've got with your homesteading community, with your gardening community, with your friends that grow things, um, here's a challenge I challenge to you. Find something that you can share around your place, flowers, bulbs, uh, tubers, uh, seeds. Pick somebody out that you watch. Uh, figure out their address and send it to them and just give them a blessing. And the time, what we're going through is so stressful. Write them a little note. Hey, thinking about you, saw that you could use this, thought it would be a blessing to you and your family and send it to them. And uh, let's grow the togetherness. Here's what I would like for the people that follow me, the, the, the YouTube community that follow me. I want us to be a community of sharing and caring and committed to each other in a way that we meet the needs of each other. And um, if you're interested in that, I don't mind being the, the, the go-between, but uh, let's make our own connections with each other. Um, many of us follow each other and we follow other people in the same community. Reach out to them, get to know them, and let's share with each other. Let's bless each other in the, the bounty, the, the, the surplus. Um, I don't believe you can outgive the provider. You know what I'm saying? So give. Love you guys. Thanks for your continued support. Homestead Aquarius, thank you for the sunchokes, the strawberries, the crones, the rattlesnake beans, and the okra. They will be a blessing to me and my family, and they will be a blessing to many other people as they grow and divide. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you guys.